Good evening, everybody. It is the 17th of June, um, 2015, and tonight we're doing principle number 17, and the amazing Leah Baxter is going to take us through this training, because she is amazing. Leah, Leah, Leah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll hand it over to you, Leah. Thank you. Right, let me just set up the screen share. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so um, Jack Hanfield, Success Principles, Principle 17, and it's ask, ask, ask. So you've got to ask. Asking is, in my opinion, the world's most powerful and neglected secret to success and happiness. So, I've said before that I don't find it easy to ask for things. Um, it's not really in my nature. Um, I'm sort of quite, quite stubborn and quite proud like that. And I think in my subconscious, it kind of, I feel like it infers a weakness and an insecurity. Um, in actual fact, that's not correct, but that is just the way my mind thinks of things if I am to ask for help. Um, so it's actually quite a vital skill to develop, and if other people feel like that, then um, it's definitely something that we need to work on. Um, so you may be holding yourself back by not asking for the information, the support, money, and time that you need to fulfil your vision and make your dreams come true. So it's really, really key that um, you develop the skill and the confidence to ask for what you need. So why are we afraid to ask? As I just said, um, I'm afraid because I think it makes me look needy and it makes me look foolish. And I think that's probably quite common uh, amongst um, other people as well. So we're afraid of experience rejection. So if we're asking somebody, uh, asking somebody for something, we're afraid that they're going to tell us no and that we're going to be humiliated. But in actual fact, all we're doing is rejecting ourselves. So we we kind of take back that, that control. We reject ourselves before we give anybody else the opportunity to reject us. Kind of a, a defense mechanism, I suppose. So, in the chapter in the book, it talks about a bold asking exercise. Um, I thought it was quite funny. They, they're in a group of people and they ask um, some of the men, ask women, if they found them attractive. Um, and in actual fact, um, the women said, yes. Yeah, but I know for me, like this, this is not something that I would do. Like I'd be really far too, far too scared. Like too shy, too embarrassed, or just do anything like that. Um, so it just goes to show that you know I am actually afraid to act because I'm afraid of the answer, and I'm almost sort of expecting a negative answer. And it's kind of like, well, why, why am I doing that? So don't assume you're going to get a no. If they say no, you are no worse off. If they say yes, you are much better off. Hi, Amy. Hi, John. Oh, John! <laughs> You've woken up. <laughs> Hi, Finn. Hello. So, how do we ask for what we want? First of all, you need to ask because you expect to get it. You need a positive expectat expectation as if you've really given what you're asking for. So we're, we're all in network marketing. And um, there's two Hi, different John. aspects of that. Hi, John. <laughs> we're still asleep. So nice of you to join us, John. <laughs> Vic is frozen. <laughs> you were that <laughs> <laughs> sleep that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh God. We're, we're doing well. We're doing well so far. Um, right. Yeah. So we're on the network marketing. Um, there's two aspects to this. Um, one is the movement of products, so we might have clients, web clients, and the other side is sponsoring new business builders. Um, and it can be quite daunting to ask people if they want to join your business. Um, so I know for me, um, the first two people that I sponsored, 
I went in there with a positive expectation. I sort of psyched myself up and I fully expected uh, me to be formed to join my business. Um, I went in there with that attitude and it's almost as if I didn't give them a choice. Obviously I did, it was their choice, I didn't force anybody into anything. But if you kind of have this positive attitude, it shows up. Um, and so because you're sort of expecting something about. Assume you can. But don't start with the assumption, assumption that you can't get it. Remember, our actions are based on our thoughts. So if you assume you can't, then this will show up in your body language and your tone. And this is what I just said. So you need to have, like, you need to give off sort of a positive vibe, positive expectations. Conversely, if you assume you can, you will give off a positive but what I just said. Help you to spend the way the person you know how to respond to how you want them to. You need to ask somebody who can give it to you, so you need to make sure that you're approaching the right person. Um, you need to qualify the person, so you need to kind of assess um, in your own mind um, whether that person can deliver what you're asking for. It's so good going to um, a restaurant, let's say, and say you uh, would like a discount from your bill, no good asking the cleaner if you can have a discount because the cleaner can't say yes or no, they might say yes, but it's not going to get you anywhere. What you need to do is you need to speak to your, the person sitting here at your table, you need to speak to the manager. So qualify whether that person is able to get you what you're asking for. So you can ask yourself, so you can talk to yourself through it, but also you can ask other people as well. Uh, so you might say, who would I have to speak to in order to who is authorised to make a decision about and so on. Be clear and specific. So, <laughs> uh, again, in the book, um, he asks um, people in an audience at um, a seminar that he's giving, who wants more money? And various people say, yeah, I want more money, let's get my hands on. And so he goes over and he gives them a dollar. And then he says, well, well, do you still want more money? And they're kind of sat there, like, well, yeah. So he gives them another dollar. And he's like, well, this could go on all night. It's no good saying, I want more money. What you need to say is how much more money you want. So you need to be specific. And this leads us into goal setting. So we've already looked at goal setting in some of our other chapters. Save requests produce vague results. So you need to be really specific about what you want. And again, so if you're asking somebody for something, then you need to be specific what you're asking them for um, in order to help them help you. So don't say, I want a raise. But do say, I want a raise of £500 a month. Don't say, I want to sponsor more business builders. Do say, I want to learn how to sponsor four more serious business builders in my team. Leah, that's yeah. really good that what you just said about I, I want to learn how to sponsor more business builders. I just wanted to highlight that. That was really, that is light bulb moment. That's really good. <laughs> right, as repeatedly, one of the most important principles of success is consistency, and again, we've covered this already. Um, you need to not give up. So you need to keep asking and asking and asking. Some people will say no, and it's not a reflection on you. So if you do get an initial rejection, don't take it personally. You've got to kind of detach yourself from the results. We've already said that because if you're so attached and so desperate for those results, then you'll be too afraid to ask. But get used to the idea that there will be rejection, but the key is to not give up. When someone says no, keep on asking again and again, because on a different day, when you've proven your commitment, when circumstances have changed, when the person trusts you uh, more or is in a better mood, you might just say yes. Okay, and again, I found this in my business in that six months ago, I um, just joined this business, I was so excited. I went out there, I told all my friends, I was doing this new amazing thing with network marketing. 
um, we've not lived together, and um, you know, it'll be really successful, and it'll be amazing, and I just basically just vomited arm on, like everybody does, all over them. And of course, inevitably, a lot of them said, <laughs> they didn't want to do this with me. They thought it was a bit crazy, um, but they were supportive, they said, yeah, you go for it, but it's not something for me. Um, but what I did is I went back again and I asked again, and they still said no, but I could think, just started to think about it a little bit. Um, and so I've asked repeatedly, and then the fourth time, one of my good friends, I've asked, and now she's actually changed her mind, six months later, she said yes, but she needs to wait a little while, she needs to wait a few months, and that's absolutely fine, if I can wait for six months, I can wait another two. Um, but the key is to not give up, so I need to then go back to her, repeatedly still, and you know, just sort of give her the information that she needs, give her the um, reassurance, and answer any questions that she's got. But the key is just to not give up and keep going back to these people. So, um, again, in the chapter, we've got statistics about um, how many times you need to ask somebody in order to achieve your goal. So, in terms of salespeople, 44% quit after, quit trying after the first call, 24% quit after the second call. 14% quit after the third call, and 12% quit after the fourth call. So if you add all of that up, 94% of the people quit after the fourth call. But 60% of all sales are made after the fourth call. So 94% of people are ruling them out of 60% of the business, which is crazy. You know, if it, all it took was to ask one more time, you know, or a couple more times, it can make a massive, massive difference. So just don't give up. You have to have tenacity, like Danny always talks about tenacity. You've just got to keep going, you've got to be energetic, you've got to be positive, just, you know, give people time, but just don't give a problem. So I'm actually going to do this. Um, I have decided that I will be going back to a lot of the people that I've spoken to that we've once or twice, and they're just kind of either ignored me or given me an outright no. Um, because again, people, if you ask them once or twice, they might be watching, they might want to see if you're actually committed to this business. You know, we're all committed to what we're doing, but they might think that this is just a phase or a bit of a fad and that we're going to give up after a few months. But we need to show them that we're not going to do that and we will be there to support them. And that might mean, actually, they, they turn around and think, actually, yeah, I could do this. And also, they might be like too embarrassed to ask um, questions because I was listening to Angela McVicker's call last night and she was saying, when somebody says something to you like, oh, um, it sounds like a pyramid thing, we're quite quick to like jump down the throats and be like, oh my God, you work in a pyramid. And she said, you shouldn't do that. You should say, do you know what? Do you know what? I, I thought that as well. Or if you didn't, you could say, my friend thought that as well. And I completely understand. And the first thing you have to do is validate why they feel that way like we shouldn't attack people for feeling the way they do we need to validate why they feel that way say i completely understand what why you would think that i thought it as well however what i've found is this and i think some people yeah, they're too embarrassed to come back to you until you bring it back up with them because i've had that today, and then i've brought it up to them and they've said things like, oh, the reason why I said no is because I thought I had to do all of those blazes and what I had to do all of the Zoom calls. And I'm like, no, it's just, you know. Exactly, yeah. And like you just said, if they might be afraid to ask. So we're talking about asking how we are afraid to ask them. They might be afraid to ask us questions. So you've got to, like you say, take that into account. It goes both ways. So. What we can do now is we can apply what we've learned over the past 16 chapters from this book um, in order to sort of help us to give us the confidence um, to ask people, basically. So, first of all, we need to take responsibility. No one can do this for you. You're the one who has to do the asking. Remember why you're doing this. You know, we all encourage... Um, new people in the business that you, know, you need to get your why down on paper, at least be starting to think about it, because 
your why is going to be your, your power, your rocket fuel that is going to keep you going and give you that push that you need. Um, and also that will, that will give you the courage to ask people to go out there and just ask them if they want to, you know, if they want to join your business. Think about what, what you want, okay? So what, what is it that you want to get out of this? Um, and that will help you to sort of think about what you want to ask, or who you want to ask, um, and why you're doing it. How's your belief? So, uh, sorry, train keep going past. Um, yeah, how's your belief? So I would always encourage people to, you know, this is a um, a continual sort of development process. You need to keep reevaluating you know, your own skills, your own beliefs. Um, if your belief is sort of not not up here where it should be, then as you're asking people to take a look, they're gonna they're gonna see that and they're gonna respond appropriately. So you need to believe in this one hundred percent to know how good this is. Um, and then that will come across when you're asking people to have a look and they will see you enthusiastic. So it's a constant thing, you've got to keep working on your belief. Operate as if, as if everyone you're asking is part of a plot to get, um, get you what you want. So, again, it's about your frame of mind. So you need to um, then distance yourself. So people are going to give you a no then treat that as a learning experience. So you can go back and think, well, what did I say? How did I ask them? Um, what was my body language like? What was, it, what was my verbiage? Um, they're there to help you to improve. And then if you also ask them, like I said before, and expect to get a yes, then that will help them to respond in the way that you want. Again, Goals are so, so important. Like we talk about this all the time. It comes up practically every week. But you need to have the goals written down. You need to have them with you. You know, carry them around with you. Have it in your purse, in your handbag, whatever. But you need to know what it is you want to achieve. So um, part of my goals each month is who I'm going to ask, how many people I'm going to ask, when I'm going to ask them by. So you need these smart goals. Um, Something specific, a bit measurable, uh, attainable, uh, something else again. <laughs> but um, yeah, make sure you've got your goals written down. Chunk it down, this is one of the ones that I did. So it might seem a bit daunting, you might think, oh, I want to ask 30 people this month. Um, I can't, oh, like, how am I going to do it? I can't even bring myself to ask one. But just chunk it down, maybe do one person a day and then build it up, maybe you maybe do two people a day or three people a day. So follow those who have been there before you. Um, ask them what they did. So Danny is a perfect example of this. I know that um, when she first started this business, she followed Zoe around like, you know, like she was her shadow. She just went everywhere with her. She asked her loads and loads of questions. And even now, Danny, you're so, so good at asking questions. At the end of a Zoom call, we've got like, a guest speaker on something, and they always say, have you got any questions? And my mind just goes like, oh, I'm always like, oh, like, who's the big of a question? I can't think of anything, because I don't know, I don't know, my mind just goes blank and I panic, but you're so, so good at this, so it's definitely a skill that we all need to learn. Is that a skill, or is that just being really nosy? <laughs> I don't know, I think it's the ability to have like a clear frame of mind, though, um, and to think of questions as you're going along, um, and to remember them. So I might think of something, but then if I don't write it down, I've forgotten by the time that they're taking questions. So, mm. yeah, you know, ask these people that have been there and have done that because we've got a whole wealth of information and everybody wants to help everyone. You know, everyone is trying to drag everybody up with them to the top of this business. So make use of that. One of the um, best questions as well to ask people if, they, if they're doing something that you want to do or they are somewhere where you want to be or they've done something that you want to do is just say, how did you do it? How did you do it? Tell me how you did it. That, that's it. And that people will. People will say, well, I'm not really quite sure, but these are the things I did. Yeah. You can ask you at the end. What did you do? <laughs> so, asking can be uncomfortable. 
we always talk about our comfort zone and how we need to get out of our comfort zone. And it is absolutely key to personal development, you know. Like, we're all scared of something. There's always something that we don't want to do. Uh, but I talked before about eating that frog, you know, because that one thing, that one job that you really don't want to do, that is what you need to do first, okay? So get out of your comfort zone and get on with it. Eat that frog. Eat, eat that frog. Don't forget to visualise. So this will help you to autom automatically know what, who, and when to act. Okay, so just again, we're drawing on all of these skills that we've worked on so far. Visualise what it is you want, and that will give you that drive to just go out there and ask these people. Act as if. So assume what you are asking for has already come about, and we've already sort of gone over that. Take action. This <laughs> is. Again, like talk about goals is so so important. This is so important. This is fundamental. We can work on all these skills, we can read all these books, we can listen to all these audios, and we can be so sort of pumped and like right, I'm gonna do this. But unless you actually do something about it, nothing is gonna happen. So take action. So ask these people now. Not right now, you know, down the hall, but then as soon as you go off ask them. <laughs> Just lean into it. So just go for it, okay? You, you'll learn along the way. Yes, you'll make mistakes. Yes, you'll get rejection. You'll get no. But you'll learn from it. Feel the fear. Do it anyway. So, I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't know why we're so afraid to ask. Um, but we are. I am. I know I am. Um, and it is such a daunting thing. But it doesn't make any sense. So just do it. <laughs> Be willing to face reject rejection, again, we talked about that. Be persistent. And that's, that is practically everything in the book that we've gone through so far, summarised and talked about in anyway, 10 sentences. Um, so yeah, just a good recap. Um, this week, a lot of us li have listened to the 30 Ask programme uh, by Emily David Ambrot, and it, it's so good, it's really, really good. Like, I know there are a lot of sound clouds and a lot of YouTube videos and Zooms and what have you going around. But I think sometimes we just need to draw attention to some of the really, really key ones. This one is brilliant because she gives so much information about practical stuff that you can actually go and do. She, she basically hands you it on a plate, she spoon feeds you, she tells you exactly what you need to do and explains how by asking 30 people in 30 days, she gives you some amazing scripts that you can learn and recant. And it's a simple formula to sponsor one to four new consultants into your business for 30 days. She gives you everything you need in about 20 minutes. It's just an essential lesson. I really, really recommend this one. And again, looking at asking, she really recommends that um, if you say have a one to one with somebody, ask your prospects all about them. So make them feel special, be interested in them, okay? And that will help them to be responsive and open with you. Another good thing about that call is she's saying that we're in the sorting business. We're not in the we're not in the convincing business. We're not trying to convince people to do this business. We can't do it for people. We're sorting out whether this is a fit for them because this is not a fit for everybody. So yeah. we, how do we know this is a fit for them unless we get to know them? So if they say something like, "Oh, I'm on maternity leave and I don't really want to go back to work after it ends," then you can say, "Well, I've got something that might be great for you." But if they said something like, "I'm doing this job." Um, it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, I get to travel. I get to have time freedom. I've got time over. I absolutely love it. Then this job probably isn't going to be great for them. So it's working out by asking them questions whether this actually is a fit for them or not. You're just a sponge, you, aren't you? You just take everything in. It just goes in and then you just have it. <laughs> it is a really good You're right. It's a really good one. <laughs> So yeah, I've kind of set myself a challenge that I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to set myself a 30 day period. I'm going to ask 30 people because I've set these goals in the past. And I've not necessarily quite hit it. Um, so I've got to be, I don't know, 20 odd. Um, and then something's come up and I've stopped. But I, she said, you do 10 days. You ask the 30 people. The next 10 days, you can follow up with them, meet them. Um, and then in the last 10 days, you can finalise any sort of questions and get everything sorted and get the title. 
to challenge yourself to go for it. And finally, got a bit of homework if you, you know, fancy it. <laughs> so start asking today. Make a list of things that you want uh, that you don't ask for. So it might be, I don't know, in, if you have, if you currently have another job, you might want a raise, or uh, I don't know, you might take your kids to school and you perhaps don't know any of the other parents there. You might want to ask them if you know there's anything a social get together that you can sort of get to know some of the other parents and you know expand your kind of social network so just to think about what it is that you want in life and where you want to go it doesn't have to be to do with network marketing but it can be and just start asking people ask for what you want to go for it start thinking about what it is that you're afraid of and what's holding you back and write that down um, but then also think about what it's costing you if you don't ask okay and what would be the benefit the, um, if you were to ask so again, if you're um, if you don't know any of the other kids' parents at school, you might feel like, well, um, you might not know many people in that area. It might be um, restricting your child, you know, in terms of social outside of school activities. Um, so you can think about the, what is costing you, not asking, um, but what would happen if you actually went and just just ask people. And do you know what? The majority of people are nice. People are nice. You ask them something, you know, you can say, do you want to go for a coffee? They're probably going to say, yeah, actually, that'd be really nice. So don't be scared, just go for it. Someone, um, someone asked me something this afternoon. Somebody sent me a message, and it must have took a lot of courage, and it was about Arbon, but they're not in our team. And she said, oh, um, I've seen your video. I know you do Arbon, but I've been asked to do it by somebody else, and I really, really want to ask somebody that has got no um, attachment to whether I do it or not, like somebody that would make no difference to whether I should do it or not. And I said, well, it's entirely up to you, but I think it's brilliant. And we had a bit of a chat and she said, I'm worried because um, what if it doesn't work? And I said, yeah, that's, everybody thinks that about everything, no matter whether it's a job or yeah. how do things like that. I said, but if it did work, what would this give you? And she said, oh, it would mean that I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't have to go back to work after maternity. Um, my husband wouldn't have to work long hours. We could be at our kids' sports and stuff. And I said, okay, and if you don't do it, will anything change in your life and like she messaged back she was like no i said well i think you've got your answer then and then she messaged back she was like, i'm gonna do it thank you so much so she messaged me she she didn't even know me but she just wanted to ask somebody the opinion of somebody that like had no attachment to whether she did it or not so yeah just ask people people are happy to answer anyway exactly yeah um yeah, and finally, this just links back to principle three. Um, so that chapter is about um, figuring out what it is that we want. So um, if you go back to what you wrote down for that one, or if you didn't, um, you didn't join us on the call for that one, then go back to principle three and start there, um, and that will help you with it. And that's it. <laughs> so I'll hand back to Zoe Allen slash Danny. <laughs> John, can John talk or not? I don't know. Is he there? I don't know whether I can or not. I could just about hear you on my next. Really not going very well, so um kept cutting out. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. Yeah. You sound good. Hello? No. Yeah, we, we can just about hear you, John. That was a tag then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got that. <laughs> can you, oh, it's, oh, it's really hard. You're breaking it. Everyone, everyone's frozen. I've got, <laughs> what, I've got lots of frozen, uh, frozen people on my screen. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've got my, my phone is out in the garden at the moment trying to get internet. When are you, when are you getting internet? Yeah. For those watching this call on the record. Oh, thank you so much, guys, for uh, continuing on without me. Oh, so embarrassing. I can't believe it. <laughs>
Yeah, I was going to say for those watching the recording, John fell asleep. And uh, I couldn't. Oh, I must have caught about half of that. So um, get uh, that recording on, uh, Danny. Get, get it uploaded. Leah, you've done amazing. It was. Uh, thank I don't know. You. We, we've, I cancelled the order because they were taking too long, and uh, this big guy. What's that? Hello. Yeah, we don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> Can you say Danny? We can't really hear. So does anybody want to do next week? <gasps> no. <laughs> you didn't say that, did you? <laughs> you dropped me in it. What? I did. I must admit, uh, it's uh, uh, terrible. <laughs> I got home, I've thought to, I've got an hour, got an hour to chill out, sat down on the sofa, man, <laughs> I got woken up by my phone, thanks Danny. You're welcome. <laughs> John, are you doing next week's? Amy, do you want to do next week's? Rejection. Rejection. Our location, location. Oh no, reject, reject. Amy James, is that a yes? Then I didn't see that. Amy. Hey, it's easy, on it? Gonna do it, Amy. He's like, if I just ignore everybody, they'll disappear. <laughs> Yay! Amy's doing next week. Brilliant. Right, thank you so much for that, Leah. I'll load this to you too so John can actually watch it. <laughs> yeah. See you all next week. All right, thanks, Sunny. Bye. Bye.